Okay, welcome back to members of 121 Community Church in Grapevine, Texas, and our ongoing study in a philosophy of religion by Edgar Sheffield Brightman, published in 1940. We're firmly into the third level of phenomenology now. We've covered phenomenology of religion, of value, and now we're looking at a phenomenology of revelation. And this is the first lesson in a revelation, uh, Phenomenology of Revelation. It'll be pages 172 to 202. It'll get us uh, launched into this new area, but uh, we're going to have a few preliminary comments first. We've got a chance now. Uh, we kind of need to understand the larger picture before we get into this third level of phenomenology. Brightman divides his philosophy of religion into two parts. There is a phenomenology in the first half and then there's problems addressed by a philosophy of religion in part two. The phenomenology is addressed as a triad and one is phenomenology of religion, two is phenomenology of value, and three is phenomenology of revelation. So your larger triad is religion, value, revelation. Religion plus value equal revelation. Now under methodology, we need to understand a few things also. Under methodology, Brightman is America's Hegel. Brightman is America's Hegel. He uses, uh, frequently uses Aristotle's lexical content and Hegel's system, and he really is uh, the American version of Hegel. So his methodology, the overarching larger methodology of his system is, one, Aristotle's moment, first, as the posited idos ideals, two, those ideals going out of themselves in action as the going out of the self in experiment and construction and reconstruction. And then three, Hegel, the Hegel moment of reaching coherence, valuative coherence. So basically it's a Aristotle relation Hegel. Aristotle relation Hegel. Or Aristotle action Hegel. But that gives you just a little bit of a breakdown. Just keep in mind that right now we're, work we're working on finishing up that larger triad of religion, value, and revelation. We're, re we're working on that large triad of uh, religion, value, and revelation. And so we're going to take a look at uh, our chart. Now we're going to take a look at uh, block one, the triad for knowing God. And uh, we begin by looking at uh, Revelation as holy other, and he gives us the examples of Bart, who said that Revelation comes from above as a gift from God. Bruner, reason has been broken into by Revelation. Tillich, Revelation is the breaking through of the unconditioned into the conditioned. So, first we get Revelation as holy other. Second, we look at the uh, Revelation as dogmatic or dynamic. And we take a look at a comparison between dogmatic fundamentalism. Revelation, revelation communicates infallible truth, not arrived at through reason. A communication of ideas by divine power. Then we get dynamic modernism. Self is given impulses to move toward God. Revelation conveys God's purpose, not God's knowledge. The self's response enlists reason in this perspective. And obviously, Brightman prioritizes the dynamic view because it attaches more importance to reason. Revelation requires a response for Brightman. It does not yield infallibility. It also affirms a special revelation in various degrees where the self evaluates normative special revelations of value. And that's key for Brightman. 
within his system, the self will evaluate normative special revelations of value. Because remember, he does believe in the objective presence of a coalescence of values that have been sustained. But he does look at a third category beyond the dogmatic and the dynamic. He looks at the category of faith. We acquire knowledge of God through immediate experience, through revelation, and through faith. So you've got immediate experience and revelation and faith as your three avenues of knowledge of God. And faith has three aspects, acceptance of revelation as a gift of God, so it's acceptance, gift, and trust. Acceptance, gift, and trust. Augustine defined it as cognition with assent. It is intellectual knowledge accompanied by belief. Faith is not in conflict with, re with reason within this perspective. Faith is the experimental method of reason, and that's Breitman's position. Faith is that experimental positing of reason. It's the experimental positing that gets a return of the moment of construction and reconstruction. So faith becomes experimental method. So we get a triad for knowing God from Breitman. And that is immediate experience, revelation, and faith. Immediate experience, God is known through the objective continuance of values in reality. Two, revelation, God is known by rational response to divine impulse of value normative revelations. That brings us to three, faith, God is known through the experimental faith method of the dialectic of reason. That is Breitman's position right there. There you go. That is evolutionary theism as a triad. Immediate experience, revelation, and faith. So Breitman gives us his position as a triad. We know God through immediate experience, revelation, and faith. That brings us on to this uh, the methodology in block two. And he takes a look at... Uh, a priori principles, all immediate experience must be interpreted by reason. Faith acknowledges the ideals of reason. Reason is the source of religious insight. Religion as a concept has two foundational perspectives. The Aristotelian, reason is a priori knowledge for a particular realm of experience. It's posited religious ideal, that's the Aristotelian. And then the Hegelian, Reason is the one principle of coherence, taking all realms of existence into account. And that is Breitman in a nutshell. It's the combination of the Aristotelian and the Hegelian. He gives a modern example in that Knudsen, the true is original and underivable. The true is verified through subjective tendency. He criticizes this position, though, because it remains in the abstract and never becomes uh, concrete, going out of itself. And that's why he uh, takes up uh, action in note two. Testing principles through action. We know God through action. God arouses our loyalty to ideals. But it cannot be the exclusive way of knowing God. Evaluation through thought is also necessary. So, for Breitman, note three, a priori plus action equals coherence verification. We are to seek a consistency between theory and fact of experience. Positive truth must re be related to the total range of experience. Positive ideals, positive truth models must be related to total range of experience. Therefore, the methodology for Breitman is note four, the Aristotelian moment, we posit the re religious ideal as a subjective tendency that is still in need of going out of itself to seek coherence. 
That's the theoretical step one. Then two, going outward in the relation moment through phronesis and praxis with a loyalty to ideals seeking public verification of our posited truth. Then we reach three, Hegelian moment of seeking consistency between theory and fact of experience, relating the posited truth to the total range of experience. And this is ongoing and never ending, never really reaching the absolute, but always reaching toward it. And that's why in note three, Breitman can say that knowing God is a heuristic process. Knowing God is a heuristic process. It's that process of Aristotelian moment, outgoing relation, and Hegelian moment. It's a heuristic process. And in note one, we look at the constants of value. Revision of theory is always in process. However, faith of religion does hold to a constant of value. Continuous of value remains religion's working hypothesis. They're always moving toward the truth. We posit truth as this movement. Truth is heuristic. It's trial and error method. It is what Breitman calls experimental and constructive. That's his terminology. It is, it's not really trial and error. It is experimental and constructive. Experimental and constructive. So we look at the heuristic method of value. Our task is to understand the coherent metaphysic of value that's designated the problem of God. God is source and perpetuator of value experience. We apply the principle of coherence. We search out the signs of order. Therefore, values plus signs of order equals the ideal model of coherent reason. And that's how we create a sign model. We combine the value ideals plus the signs of order, the relational signs, to create the sign model, the ideal model. So, note three, defining the common ground of value. Absolute finality is never reached. We do not seek a possession of the truth, says Brightman. We seek unification of the truth. We do not form unchangeable dogma. God is defined as the source and the continuance of values. Reason requires the variety of sciences and the coherence of sciences. All axiogenetic processes function as signs of the common ground of value. That is an axiomatic statement. There you go. The axiogenetic processes function as signs of the common ground of value, which is that ongoing coherence of values as objective reality. This is our first lesson in the uh, third level of phenomenology. This is phenomenology of revelation. And we got some mini triads. We got the uh, first mini triad of immediate experience, revelation, and faith. And then the very significant triad in block two of Aristotelian moment, outgoing relation moment, and Hegelian moment. That's key. Block two is always your key moment, but that triad in block two is very significant. That is Breitman very concisely stated. He combines Aristotle and Hegel. And then we reach that uh, finality of uh, defining the common ground of value, and that's going to be compiling our values and our signs, our relational signs with our value signs to create a sign ideal model, and that's the work of coherent reason. We take value signs and we take relational signs and we make up an ideal value sign model that's called the work of coherent reason. That becomes the experimental positing and constructing. That becomes our methodology of experimental positing and then the return moment and construction and reconstruction of as we move further toward understanding coherence and unification of truth. The goal is unification of truth. That's the goal, unification of truth for Brightman. Unification of truth is the goal. It is what he calls, and he's not afraid to use this term of metaphysic, but he calls it 
the quest of forming a coherent metaphysic of value. That's his philosophy of religion. We seek to create a coherent metaphysic of value. And metaphysic is almost a, a non-existent word today in the 21st century. We might hear something like a coherent ontological or current, oh, coherent ontology of value, but Brightman's terminology is we are seeking to form a coherent metaphysic of value by combining value signs with relational signs to form ideal sign model, which is the work of coherent reason. We get a tremendous uh, first lesson in the level of phenomenology of revelation. We'll pick up next time on page 203.